groups will be presented. This used to be part of our uh, general assembly. We were presented uh, only for the EVM members. This year we decided to move those reports for the general program of the uh, academy since they have comments that may be of uh, interest for the general KE uh, audience. Right. So we have six reports being presented, uh, being presented today. The reports for uh, our uh, working groups, which are the fund rating, community financial advisory board and CPLE uh, working group, and also the report for the free Q foundation. Right? So uh, every group will present um, the report in uh, eight minutes, then we have time for just uh, one question. Right? And so let's get started with uh, the fund rating.
não puxo por outro chegar ao TSM. Mas olha, Ronda website. I didn't test the PT URL, so for example, I made two donations and we need to refund the whole one because it wasn't good to the database, so it was something that I was learning. Uh, we are need where we need help. Are 
still using Telegram and are increasingly using Matrix. So, any questions? There will be more in the uh, meeting with things that we can't talk about in public. Just want to ask, uh, do you feel power that you have the tools you need to solve these conflicts? I don't think we need power. I think we need more people to talk to us. I mean, we'll we'll talk via I don't know something free, <laughs> face to face, or non-free if that's all we can use. Um, that's okay. Uh, it's sometimes very in intimidating for people to talk to somebody that they see as in power. I don't see myself as in power. I see myself as more of a listening ear and able to take things into consideration. I believe my fellow team members feel the same way. You talk about programs in the community. That's why that is growing. Is it correct? Mm -hmm. So are there something good in the community? Oh yes. I think the community is well from when I first came in was right after a major fork. <laughs> Things have definitely gotten better. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean that, that even people who are friendly with each other also have conflicts. And sometimes they may not have the tools to come to an agreement. And sometimes they're so invested in the issue that they don't see that their own conduct is a problem. That actually is really common because humans are humans. I think I'm out of time, so talk to me privately. Yeah, we have one last one. Oh, all right. So you commented about uh, the choice of communication and the problems and several discussions that you had at the beginning of the year. And this is not common in any place or any company, there's several methods. I think the only solution right now, the hard solution is like, we need someone that point one thing, good or bad, doesn't matter. We need one thing to start, and everyone is to the eye of this. The question is, can you have this someone appointed at this one solution? Being that the good. Are you talking about the chat solution? Yes. Oh, well, I'm not going to choose it. I don't know who would be the person to choose that. But I, I'm out of time, so thanks very much.
But we can start from who is in there. We have David. We have Robert. Now, why do we have dates here on this slide? Because this group is special. The people in the financial working group are dealing with delicate things, not as delicate as the community working group, but still. And they require special confidence from the membership. So they are voted in for two years. We have elections coming this year for renew renewing a membership of new members. And then those are the official goals and mission of the Financial Working Group. To say it simply, it's to support the treasurer with the land of KDE EV finances. That's summarized that. The working group is advisory, it's not forcing anything on the treasurer or on the board. It's helping, advising. Pre presenting nice reports at this time. <laughs> and then I will pass it through to the budget. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about how financial planning for the EV actually works. And the cornerstone of that is um, the budget plan that we make um, every year. Um, so, actually, let me start with this slide. Um, the process for our budget planning tends to start in the last quarter of every year. It starts when the KDEV board meets for their fall meeting and has a discussion about what we expect to have to be included in the budget plan and um, what it should look like and we go through the different positions of the budget plan as I will do with you in a moment and um, the changes we expect, the trends that we sort of extrapolate and uh, um, the goals we want to set. And after that discussion, um, the treasurer is responsible for drawing up the first draft which then subsequently gets um, reviewed by both the board and the financial working group and gets iterated over a number of weeks based on input from various people and then eventually released to the KDEV membership which may have additional input and sometimes we release some last minute fixes based on that. So what is um, in the budget plan? The budget lists our income and also our expenses, and has line items for the different um, income sources that we have. For example, various membership fees, which can go to individuals or corporate support members, um, conference expenses, um, and by the way, this year we are very lucky to have a report number of sponsors for Academy, and thank them very much for that. And of course, individual sort of drive-by donations through the various forms of donations that we accept. Um, the numbers in the budget plan we draw them up based on the performance of the previous year and how, um, how things evolve and we try to predict the income we see in the next year. Um, in some of the income line items it works a little bit differently where instead of predicting the income um, we set a goal for what kind of income we want to achieve, specifically with our fundraising activity. And based on that goal, uh, we end up deciding whether to run certain campaigns or what form they should take. Um, this sort of has, has an element of sort of public relations management to it. And I will get into that a little bit more later on with the concrete example of the 2018 budget plan. Now, um, the budget plan also includes our plan expenses. Um, the plan's expenses map very sort of neatly to KDE's, uh, KDEV's support activities to the community. Um, it includes the events we help organize and fund, both uh, paying for organization to some extent and uh, materials we do for that, but the lion's share is certainly travel support for community members to attend those events. Um, 
we had a number of employees as an organization. They also expect to get paid, so that shows up there. Um, infrastructure, like our servers and office materials. And uh, finally, administration, for example, paying our taxes and our phone bill. Now, um, let's take a look at the 2018 budget plan, which at this point is a good half year old. So, um, one thing that we saw in the previous year is that um, we see a, a sort of a trend shift in our income uh, where our supporting memberships, both from individuals, we are civic here, but also uh, corporate sponsors, it's exceeding the uh, income that we have from regular donations and uh, fundraising to some extent. So, um, both the income from individual supporting membership and a corporate sponsor membership is up. Um, since that is the case, we decided to be a little bit less aggressive on running fundraising campaigns. Um, we don't want the PDE to appear to be a little too needy, and uh, we don't want to go to the well too often. And since we were in a comfortable, comfortable position where our supporting membership income is on the way up, uh, we decided to um, set our fundraising goal via campaigns a bit lower. Then um, another income source is Google Summer Code. Um, it's perhaps interesting to mention that the budget plan also has a section on risks and uncertainties. Google Sum of Code was among those, as Google has decided to occasionally rotate some long standing, uh, long participating organizations out of Sum of Code. So there was a certain risk that we might actually not be in Sum of Code this year. It would be very hard to be able to do it again, but this was a risk that we had to plan for and be able to mitigate. One minute left. All right, I will talk faster. Um, expenses, okay. Again, um, uh, our sprint expenses were tracked to be up this year. We had one to have more sprints, and we expect more sprints, particularly due to the PE Goals program. Um, Academy is a little bit more expensive this year than previous years, which is by no means a bad thing, since um, we expected high attendance. Um, the location is a bit more expensive, but the location may be the reason for that high attendance, so again, that's certainly the bad thing, just something that we have to expect in that level. Um, I will probably post um, the details of how that number is constructed, have changed it, but it's mostly always steady. Uh, the KDE moved to a new office, which costs some money, uh, our tax account service is more expensive, and unfortunately we also had to shoulder a very large remaining one-time uh, tax load of the account. Now, I mentioned already our sponsorship in Congress Academy has been very good and has far exceeded our expectations. So, the more expensive location, more than the sort of return on this investment. Um, supporting memberships has become more and more reliable, and it's increasingly a problem that we don't exploit them quite as much as we should because we still have problems with the cities here and we should fix. Um, Rwanda did not happen. It was covered from the budget plan, we would have been able to fund it, but we had to. Kevin is holding up a sign. So, grass, no. with Academy all over the place. If you ignore Academy, stable and good. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Also stable and good. Yes, um, this would have talked a little bit about how we got the pineapple donation. However, I had a brief chance to talk about this during the board report already, so we may skip it. And Mark, Move us on to the next question. Do you have questions? We'll take one probably. In There's only time. one question and a short one because it was a lot of time. <laughs> one question? Your question was a word. All right. All right.
Um, so, yeah, what, who we are and what we do. So the, the advisory board is basically a formalization of uh, KDE's alliances, both in the commercial and the non-commercial open source ecosystem. And the advisory board working group consists of contact persons for each member of this advisory board. We did this so that uh, the advisory board members wouldn't always have to come to the whole advisory board with everything that they, every question that they had or every input that they wanted to give, but that every organization had their own specific contact. And uh, yeah, and that each um, member of the group is um, they are responsible for one advisory board members where they are open for input uh, and questions and also um, getting them in touch with other parts of the community. For example, yeah, if someone has a specific question about a, a specific project, specific application, then their contact can get them in touch directly. Current members are Aleix, David, Eike, Helio, Kai, Uwe, Lydia, Sebastian, Cornelius, Thomas and me. Um, yeah, what have we done over the past year? Uh, we had five advisory board calls, uh, which is always yeah, with um, all the advisory board members and um, the contacts. It's usually uh, not everyone can make it to the same uh, time. So because some, some of the advisory board members do what they're doing within their work time, others do it within their free time. So we are alternating times between afternoon and evening so that everyone uh, has a chance to come at least to every second uh, meeting. And uh, we have welcomed two new members to the advisory board, Private Internet Access and Debian. And um, yeah, we are currently one of the things that we've done was uh, coordinating a letter calling on politicians to accept all uh, free software repositories from requirements to scan and filter. So this is uh, maybe you've, you've heard about it, there's the new EU copyright directive um, and one of the, the articles in it, Article 13, um, has everyone who hosts um, anything where uh, users can, can uh, upload things uh, has to filter them for any potential copyright infringement um, and this would be pretty hurtful for open source communities because we, yeah, we don't have the, the staff or the technology uh, to do this kind of filtering and we also don't want to do that. Um, so we have partnered with several of our partner organizations within the advisory board to um, yeah, draft and, um, and sign a letter together to politicians to make an exception for all of open source and free software. Yeah, some, some lessons learned. So we uh, have tried to figure out a good schedule for the advisory board calls. We try to do them every two months and uh, we realized that we didn't really have enough interesting topics to make every call worthwhile and realized that uh, people were seemed less and less motivated to attend every call. So we went back to a four month schedule and uh, hoping that we will now have enough topics uh, yeah, to really, really make those interesting. And um, one positive thing that we've learned was that we were actually surprised by the, uh, by the impact that um, the, the news of Debian joining the advisory board actually had in the uh, free software ecosystem with users, with uh, people on, on forums, on Reddit, uh, with news outlets about, uh, about Linux and open source. So for us, uh, Debian joining the advisory board was more or less, yeah, well, we, we like each other, each other we have uh, different missions. It, it was just coming natural to us that Debian should be on our advisory board. But um, yeah, for, for the world outside of us, it was really big news. Was, oh, uh, what is happening? Will this, what will this mean? Will uh, Debian now switch to Plasma as default desktop? Um, that, was, that was pretty interesting. It showed that just being on the advisory board actually means something, and not only for us, but also for the outside world. And uh, yeah, where we, we need help, we're um, currently trying to find more closely what the advisory board should do, and also what the advisory board working group should do. So um, yeah, if, if anybody has, has any input on uh, what could make the advisory board really useful, then uh, we're happy for it. 
our key goals and plans. Um, yeah, as I said, we want to define more closely the, the duties of an advisory board contact. So um, yeah, that people really know what's expected from them. From them. We also want to do more of these joint initiatives uh, and actions, like uh, I said, with a letter to the um, politicians. Um, but yeah, that was the only big thing that we did, and we think that there's still a lot more potential. And of course, we want to grow the advisory board further. So also, if anybody has has ideas for organizations that should join the advisory board, then we're also happy for that. Yeah, you can you can reach us under this email address. Um, yeah, questions. Question. Question. that we had was um, that uh, Suse came to us um, saying that our their schedules of, uh, of updates don't really match with, uh, with our schedules and also that um, we didn't have any uh, long time support long term support version for plasma so um, those always had to decide should they um, what, what plasma version they should include in their releases and then what to do because we wouldn't, uh, or yeah, Plasma only had six month um, support schedule, so uh, they had the problem that they always had to backport fixes from uh, later uh, Plasma versions, and so we, yeah, we tried to, to find a solution, and the yeah, Plasma LTS is basically what came out of this. Thank you. 
in terms of we also introduced some new build hosts. Thanks to the board for approving those machines, they replaced the existing ones and sped up build, build times. In some cases, you're looking at build times improving by 50% or more. And we also reworked how our Windows build hosts are set up so that kind of makes things more flexible. It means if we needed to, we could introduce 32 bit or 64 bit builds separately. We could use MingW instead of MSBC, it is a separate compiler, and so on. We also got rid of some services that were not needed that were going away out. The LXC is my filter service for those wondering why we had to shut down five times on Satori. It's because it's still a password in plain text, which is really, really bad. So it kind of, it comes to the end of its time and when we found that it's like, this has to go, I'm sorry. We also discontinued our mirror of Qt on uh, our Git servers and we stacked the mirror and shut down a number of sites including the desktop sign wiki, which was known when we used since the end of the desktop sign, desktop sign and also a couple of old academy sites which once again weren't changing anymore, so we shut them down as well. But uh, after so aesthetically, no one ever needs to go do the content, but you can't change it now. We also closed review board for new reviews because everyone now uses fabricated that. In terms of email services, that was kind of also another really big change we made this year. Scanning system, we, for those who have worked with it before, we are still using the Sari rule set. Yeah, so we've got rid of that script that we review all the rules to make sure that they are actually valid, and we tuck out a lot of old scoring and all the rest of it we had accumulated over the years, and as a result, items are just remaining in the final rate, keeping this garbage through. We also now form DMARC enforcement, so that's basically a mechanism for. Domain owners to say, this is what I want you to do when this email wasn't signed by me, and it's not that it didn't come from my server, but I see it's about sending an email. That's quite important for PayPal, ICM, and all the rest of So that's actually really good. On the right, even though it's been on the PayPal journey, they don't sign the email, even though they say they do.
continued from sending email from Germany, sending email from the UK. It seems that AT&T and Verizon had to do a second mail to come from the UK, but they don't accept it when it comes from the to Europe. I don't know why, that's them, but no. We can take a civil war. Just a second. software, in particular for the development of KDB software. So it's a joint uh, foundation with two people from the KDB side and two from the Q company side. And we have a legal contract that ensures that Q stays free software. Um, the covered platforms are desktop Linux, Android, Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Windows Phone, Apple Mac OS and Apple, Apple iOS. And it's, it includes all parts of Qt. Um, everything there is uh, a free software license, more specifically, mostly the LGPL version 3 and also under the GPL version 2 or later. So to ensure that it's compatible with a wide range of free software. 
um, and for some other modules, um, it's at least a GPL world 3. For example, some new modules have a dependency to a, a, a Apache license, which is just not countable with um, GPI version 2. So that's the main reason that. Parts that were proprietary in the cloud have all been relicensed or, re or replaced by now. For example, if you quick compile so we have a, a clean situation. Um, not covered are other platforms like Embedded, QNX. Um, those are only available with the, Q, the, the paid Q license. And of course, the Q company has the right to offer additional product, products that are developed for the platform. And um, not included in the Contracts, but also free software is a new free design, a UI design tool that has been released under the GPL 3 um, was included originally contributed by MD. So the Q company um, informed us about, about the plans for Q6 with a um, uh, two long term support releases before that. In March of 2018, Q2512, and in spring 2020, Q5015, with then Q60 in March of 2020 as a cleanup release. Um, removing code deprecating Q2515. Now, removing code doesn't mean just dropping things that are currently in use. Um, the Q company. Um, in the board of the foundation told us that they currently have no plans for the functionality in Q6. Um, of course, APIs can change or replace, but the functionality will be there. Um, appropriate, um, yeah, so, and then of course, replacements or refactoring to different models or whatever, it will all be under the same license conditions as before as matched uh, by the initial for our contracts. Now, if um, the developer community of Q were to decide that certain things are really, really unwanted, there would be ways to deal with that. We would basically do the okay for Q foundation will need to be informed and then we will talk to you whether you um, whether the KDEs people also agree that this is unnecessary. Um, we have some there, how, how to deal with that, but um, yeah, the, the KD3 Foundation has not been informed that there are any concrete plans that are not related, so that's the story. Um, yeah, if you are interested in the whole um, legal setup, or if you are just um, interested in, in the collaboration of Q and KE, um, we have a watch meeting on Tuesday at 9.30.